Hey everybody, it's Mr. Piercy here, and what we're going to be looking at in uh, today's lesson is properties about segments and their lengths and how to determine whether they're congruent to each other or not. Uh, so take a moment and pause the video as you need to to copy down the uh, vocabulary terms into your notes. On the left side, what I'm providing for you are some uh, additional information, some, some uh, symbols that are used in geometry that explain uh, that we'll be using a lot. Uh, first that I'm looking at is this symbol right here. That symbol says that uh, what we're looking at is the congruency symbol. Uh, that word or that symbol represents the words congruent to or is congruent to. And the way that we identify congruency in uh, segments are which uh, here I'm talking about these little hash marks. What I'm talking about are like this right here and this right here. Because those two segments have the same number of hash marks, it means that they're congruent to each other. Uh, same thing here, uh, this one and this one, they have the same number of hash marks, so they indicate that they are also congruent to each other. Different numbers of hash marks indicate different, uh, the fact that they're not gonna be congruent to each other. So AB will not be congruent to segment RS because AB has a single hash mark and RS has two hash marks. So there's a little bit of, uh, you know, symbols, uh, and, and maybe the symbol for congruent is new, maybe it's not, I'm not sure, but I want to make sure that you understand it uh, moving forward. A uh, little bit about the vocabulary that you see here. Um, geometry is what's known as an axiomatic system, and, and an axiom and a postulate, they're synony synonyms for each other, and essentially all that means is that uh, they are statements that I can accept to be true without you having to explain why that they're true. Uh, a theorem is also a true statement, however, it's something that I can't accept at face value. You have to explain to me why is it true. Uh, coordinates are just numbers that correspond to a point. Distance, here is a, uh, there's another vocabulary term in the definition for distance that I want to make sure you guys know, absolute value. Uh, absolute value, which I'll abbreviate, absolute value, is represented with uh, vertical bars like that, or I might refer to them as absolute value brackets. Uh, absolute value is uh, a distance, essentially. Absolute value is a distance that something on a number line is away from zero. And distance has to always be represented as a positive number. So absolute value is how we represent uh, things that might generate a negative number, generally speaking, with our arithmetic. If I say one number and then I subtract, if I say negative three minus five, that would give me a negative eight. Well, the distance between those points is eight units long, not negative eight units long. So absolute value always represents things as a positive number because it's the distance something is away from zero. Uh, that's something that sometimes kids get in Algebra 1, sometimes they don't, but since we're using it here, I want to make sure you understand what they are. So go ahead and uh, pause the video as you need to and copy down the v, uh, definition as you see here. And uh, when you're ready, go ahead and hit play again. But moving on, here we see uh, kind of our first postulate. We're talking about a, oops, a ruler postulate, meaning this is something I can accept as true without having somebody to explain why it's true. Uh, so we have two points on a, on a line or two points on a number line, whatever they are. Well, the distance between those points, uh, those coordinates that we have, those, whatever the distance is from, like say that A, let's say that A is five and this is 18. Well, the distance between them would be 13 units long. We can accept that as, as, a, true va or as a true statement. That's why we can uh, simply refer to it as a postulate. Uh, but here, at the bottom, we're recognizing that we have those absolute value brackets. So that might say something along the lines, well, what if this was a negative two, uh, or I'm sorry, let's say a negative, not two. Let's change that up a bit. Let's say a negative seven, and this is a negative two. Well, the distance between them would be here, negative seven minus negative two, which inside of the absolute value brackets will give me negative seven plus a two, which gives me a negative five. Well, the distance can't be five 
oh, I'm sorry, the distance can't be a negative number, so we just say the absolute value distance between those two points would be a positive five units long. So here it's just, you know, can you, you know, apply that postulate? Nothing, nothing uh, super, uh, super serious or super difficult to do. Uh, we're just looking to see, well, how long is this segment CD? Well, if I gave you a you know, segment to measure on a piece of paper, you would say, well, you know, maybe I can't get this part here. Maybe this corner of my ruler has been torn off or something like that, and I can't really know where it really begins. So instead of starting at zero, I'm going to start at one. So from here, it goes out to about 4.7 on the uh, centimeter ruler. So the segment itself, CD, is not 4.7 centimeters, it's whatever the distance from the first centimeter to the 4.7 centimeter mark is, so the segment is actually only 3.7 centimeters long. So that is one example of how we would be using the ruler postulate. Here's our second postulate. This is another statement I can accept to be true, okay? Uh, it's a segment addition postulate that simply says if I have two smaller segments and I combine them together, I add their lengths to make a longer segment. And what we're going to be seeing here in the example is we have uh, two segments, SR and RD, and they're being combined to make one long segment, SD. So if I want to know how long SD is, according to the segment postulate, all I have to do is add the two segments together. So SD is a combination of SR and RD, so I substitute their values and say that the segment length SD is 151 miles long in this case. This is essentially the same thing, except in the last example what we were doing is I gave you two small parts and you had to add them together to get the overall thing. Well now I'm giving you an overall length and I'm asking you to find one of the smaller parts. So it's still no big deal. We're still saying that the overall length, segment JL, has to be equal to the sum of the two parts, JK and KL. And substituting their values, we know the overall length is going to be 38, and that the one part that we know is 15. So now I subtract the 15 from both sides of the equal sign to show that KL, the part that we're looking for, is 23 units long. This one is... Uh, a little bit unique as far as how we're comparing segment lengths because they're giving it to us on a coordinate plane. So we have these four points, uh, F, G, H, and J, and it does say to kind of uh, graph them. So I have these two uh, segments graphed for you, and it's nice because they're horizontal lines. Uh, this is going to allow us to use the ruler postulate very well, uh, but only because they're horizontal or a vertical line. If they were a diagonal line, the ruler postulate, as far as how we're going to use this example, really doesn't work. And some of you may be asking, do I really need to do the ruler postulate here? Can I just count the distance? Of course you could, and I would be fine with that. Uh, counting a horizontal and vertical segment is no big deal, but let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Uh, since GF is a horizontal segment, we're only looking at the change along the x-axis because the x-axis is my horizontal movement. So if I take the absolute value difference of the two points that we have for the x values of GF, we get a segment length of five units long. Moving on to the y-coordinates of the vertical segment, HJ, well, the vertical movement moves along the y-axis. So I'm only going to look at the difference of the y values in this case. So the absolute value negative 2 minus 3 is still just a positive 5. So because they have the same length, I would say that these two segments are congruent to each other. At this point, what I want you guys to do is to pause the video and attempt to answer these three questions on your own. And when you're done, hit play and compare your answers with mine, see how you did. So go ahead and hit pause, work these out, and when you're done, hit play again and come back and compare how your answers look against mine. Well, I'm hoping that you actually did what I asked you to do, and you pause the video and work these things out. Uh, find the length of AB to the nearest eighth of an inch. So uh, for question one, you do need to have some kind of a ruler. Uh, your protractor has a ruler measurement on it, and so you can measure it uh, depending on... Uh, oh, we're making an announcement here.
Okay, apologies for that. Uh, so measuring segment AB with the ruler is about one and seven eighths inches. As long as you were close to that, that would be perfectly fine. Uh, find the length of segment QS and PQ. So according to how we set it up earlier, QS is uh, the sum of QR and RS. So substitute those values in, we get QS to be 61. Uh, PR is the sum of PQ and QR. Substitute the values that we know here, and we see that PQ is 24 units long. And the last one, consider the points A, B, C, and D. Are they congruent to each other? Well, in the last example, what we did is we graphed them. And I kind of want to see, uh, I might want to graph them just to make sure, are they horizontal and vertical segments? Uh, and in this case, when I graph them, they are. And you can kind of see here, because A, B, our points A and B have the same Y coordinate. It means they move up and down at the same rate. Uh, so that's a good indication that those are uh, going to be horizontal to each other. And because point C and point D have the same X value for their coordinate, that's a good indication that they're going to be a vertical segment. So you don't have to graph them. But in this case, uh, segment AB is six units long and CD is five units long. So you, the conclusion that we would draw is no, AB is not congruent to CD because they have different lengths. Okay, make sure that you practice writing complete sentences uh, in your solutions like this. And uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for this lesson. If you have any questions, be sure to email me or leave me a comment in the uh, uh, either the YouTube uh, section or the Google Classroom section where this video will be posted. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon.